out there. It's the Holy Hour Podcast, the bi-weekly all-cure podcast. And welcome back for the end of April celebration of 17 seconds, 40th anniversary. I'm Gavin, <laughs> joined by Donald and Chaz. Hello, fellas. Hey, guys. Hello. You guys still kicking out there? Something like that. Yeah, we're making it so far. Barely. One month, right? <laughs> a little over a month now. This is uh, <laughs> still hanging strong, and uh, we got to celebrate good, 17 man. seconds. So there you go. Yeah, that's good. It's all uh, I'm good enough to podcast. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's a positive. It's a good thing. Yeah. Well, we hope everybody out there is doing well too, and uh, holding mm-hmm. up strong, and keeping safe, and not doing stupid shit, and. Uh, be, not going being, to any of these fucking rallies. Yeah, not any of these rally yeah, people that are that. starting to pop Not going out. to the fucking beach. Yeah. Yeah. At least Learn be- how to cut your own hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's easy. If nothing else, I suggest just waiting to see what happens to this first round of fucking people going to these yeah. rallies, and then, <laughs> <laughs> then make your uh, educated decisions. But uh, and uh, welcome back to Great. the Holy Hour podcast. Man. That we mm. this might be the sole reason why we started this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight <laughs> we <laughs> we are doing the third and final profile of Cure member shows. And um, it is the third member of the Cure that was neglected by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So one, we'll be able to cover this Yo. fine gentleman's profile, but two, we'll <laughs> finally be able to just let this whole Rock and Roll Hall of Fame bullshit go and be done with it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Never. Yeah, this is... <laughs> I know we've been talking about it for a while now, but this is the third member that was... Uh, Sadly, not included in the Cure's induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Sheesh. Matthew Hartley. Matthew Aiden Why? Hartley. And, um, what a you cool know. name, and it's spelled cool, too. Oh, yeah. So, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Matthew. 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 Yeah, it's, look, I love it. Like, he grew yeah. up with that shit where people, like, just look at his name Matthew, and be like, what? Matthew. What the fuck is this? Matthew. Yeah. Matthew. Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> it's like, definitely a key, key and peel joke in there somewhere. But to, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ron. Yeah. Keep that in mind while we talk about him. He grew up with just, like, that little, like, yeah. Know. But I think it looks cool, man. Yeah, it's he's cool ahead of his it. time. I mean, that's what every kid's yeah. like now. And I'm a sub yeah. and teaching and shit. Like I'm trying to read the the role. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh. Like Jackson a, with a Q. Yeah. And... <laughs> Ten A. It's like, it's like, uh, like when a substitute comes in like <laughs> to class, you know, when he's a young kid and they like read off the names or whatever. And they're, he's like, you know, it's like, so-and-so, are you here? You're like, here. Oh, yeah. Present. And they get to him and they're like muff Matthew are you Matthew are you <laughs> yeah, and he's like ah oh, god damn it like again fuck hey art lady hey art lady <laughs> like, hey, like it's Matthew here <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> But uh, yeah, if anybody's confused out there, I'm about 98% sure it's just Matthew Hartley. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, ahead of his time. Um, <laughs> with, with the, with were, his fa- were his parents French or something? I don't know. <laughs> that's yeah, how extensive this though? review is tonight. <laughs> Not too I'm much. I'm sorry if that's racist, I'm assuming that he's French. But, yeah, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Dutch? Yeah. Maybe. But I'll Something tell you what European. I do know about him. You yes. guys ready to dive in? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Born February 4th, 1960. He just uh, turned 60 this year. So, Congratulations. Yeah, happy late birthday to Matthew. And um, he was born in small field, uh, England. <laughs> Not in a small field. <laughs> but that's, that's actually a... That sounds like a fake, <laughs> sounds like a fake city. Yeah, it's like a... <laughs> Like a melon camp song or something. <laughs> I was born in a small field. <laughs> Somewhere near Sucking Surrey a in a small field. Um, but, yep, and uh, England. And um, <laughs> in a small field. He has an older sister and brother. And uh, moved to Horley around his early teen days. And uh, started 
playing some piano somewhere around there. As you can tell with the vagueness of this, there isn't a lot of info out there on, on Matthew, so uh, apologies and bear Good. with us. And uh, just throwing that disclaimer out on the top, if anybody has more that does not get included, feel free to let us know later. But um, yeah, so he started playing piano and keys in the late 70s, so like his teen years. Um, it was noted that he was a hairdresser around the same time as like one of his first jobs. Fuck yeah. He was a wow. hairdresser between 76 and 79, which would be like, you know, the, like a hairdresser, hairdresser, or like a barber? <laughs> they said hairdresser, so I really don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I would assume they were. Get him on the line. English we need to, we need to discuss right. this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me dial him up. But uh, either way, that's pretty rad. Hello. Um, you know, <laughs> hairdresser and I the like cure. he's a hairdresser, though. That's cool, man. He's like yeah. playing in bands. Hey, he would have been doing Robert's like, hair. Yeah, he probably did like cool, like hipster hair. You yeah. Know? Like, and, and a little unfortunate. Like a, cool like a lot of his story, he, he would have. Uh, Probably had more input in the cure <laughs> later in their career. Right. He happened to be in the one phase when the cure of all bands had like the worst haircuts, you know, like it, they were pretty straightforward bad <laughs> haircuts on 17 Seconds era. It was like the one time Simon's just like rocking some weird mullet and Mole's got his thing going on. And Robert he's like, just, Matthew, could you get me real quick? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he could have. <laughs> Jump started he was totally cutting the hair. But... Like... <laughs> That's <laughs> dope, man. But uh, yeah, so we don't know too much about his childhood or actual upbringing <laughs> as, a, as a wee boy. Um, but the uh, 10 Imaginary Years boy book is going to be the, the most reliable resource for info on him. And uh, says that he's the only one. It, it's weird, too, because, you know, the back of that book where they have the baby photos and stuff. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. he's the only one that doesn't have a baby photo in that section. Oh, it's like he's already man. a teenager, even in that <laughs> section. <laughs> so, he was never a so baby maybe he dude. was never yeah, a he child. Was, he yeah, was just he, was a teenager. Just, he was just born a teenager. <laughs> a t- he just he did a out job. of a small field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> came up from the ground. Everybody else had a baby. Like sprouted, grew like hair. But the nugget of him being a late a teenager in the late seventies that played the keyboards is probably the most really only important part that matters as far as this story goes. So um, he starts playing around in bands around this time, and he's the last member to join a horly band, punk rock band, named Lockjaw. Lockjaw. And, um, yeah. Such a great name for a band. Yeah, yeah. Awesome name. And they formed in 77 as a punk rock band. And... Uh, they got on a label called Raw Records, and the band, as we mentioned, a lot of this will cross over from the 17 Seconds episodes, naturally, so bear with us. But um, in this band was a fellow named Gary, and I said Bow last time, so I'll just say Bow this time. Gary Bow. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, maybe next time you get it right. Yeah, well, if I do this three episodes in a row, maybe I'll get it right. So Gary, Gary right. was the, we'll just call him Gary, was the singer. Um, Simon Gallup played bass, and uh, Stuart Hinton mm-hmm. on guitar, Martin Ordish on drums, and Lockjaw was this punk rock band. Uh, they did some recordings. They had a song called "Journalist Jive" that you can find on YouTube. That's pretty rad, actually. If you if you check it, I, down, I listened was... to that today. Like, oh, yeah, did you pull it up? Yeah, it's like a little EP kind of thing, or like a yeah, I've listened to them before. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was it's pretty good. badass, man. Yeah, and um, I don't believe he joined Lockjaw in time to play on any of the recordings. And <laughs> sadly, we'll see this kind of pattern a lot where he <laughs> he jumps in, but you don't really know what because he's not. There's no keyboards on any Lockjaw shit for sure. <laughs> um, so cool. But then around that time, um, the they left the label and were transitioning. I'm not really sure what the full story is or why they left raw records but that's when they wanted to shift to be a more of a new wave band post-punk sound so during this process they got the keyboardist they changed their name sadly from lockjaw to the magazine spies or mag spies <laughs> slash mag terrible name see i like episodes. those names <laughs> yeah all three all of them are man. great <laughs> donald standing by them magazine spies is dope <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, i'm gonna buy that name off of man yeah i think it's <laughs> it available now it's been long enough i think where it's available Let's get getting the band back together you could be a um, magazine spies usa or something like that right totally. 
<laughs> That'd be dope. <laughs> or just put it put a year after it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this happened around seventy nine. Um and the band was managed by the bassist Simon has the older brothers, uh Dave and Rick. And um Rick in particular would be the one that takes on the band and be their manager, I believe. So um, around this time, they're playing live too, and they're playing in Crawley and other spots, and they get kind of, you know, friendly with these other bands in the area. And one in particular, this band called The Cure, that had just put out their first album called Three Imaginary Boys. Shortly after recording sessions <laughs> would emerge at Morgan Studios, uh, the Magpies were going to record a seven inch with the Obtainers and. Um, this is the one that lost Donald a little bit, so I'll say it slower in this episode than the last time. <laughs> so, so at the recording sessions of this split seven-inch, um, it's signed on that Rick, who is Simon Gallup's older brother that manages this band, still with me? <laughs> and a fellow named Robert Smith are going to produce the Mag Spies EP or whatever, so... So only weird yeah. in the sense that their first batch of recordings is the, uh, Simon's brother and Robert Smith. So mm -hmm. I think it's cool because it's like early on, something we didn't touch on in the other episodes, that <laughs> Robert's already like like producing shit, you know? Like that's something that doesn't really get drawn to mm -hmm. attention much, you know? Like... You know, if you asked me to repeat what you just told me, <laughs> like where you're like, you still follow me? I couldn't right now. Ah. I absolutely could not. <laughs> so maybe next time. <laughs> Simon's brother and Robert Smith of The Cure, who you should be familiar with, produced the first Magazine Spies recordings. So. Okay. <laughs> Only relevant because Rick too <laughs> is the dude that would later do the film, the Faith film that would be their touring Damn. thing. Remember, um, I'm pretty sure it's Rick, that brother of Simon, that does the animation film that nobody can find anymore. But it was the opening act on the Faith picture tour or whatever. Rick, I'm just gonna say, remember it's that a, whole story? Uh, it's 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 a family affair. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> like, I'm just summing it up with that. Like it's it's a family affair. And it's awesome. Not worth dwelling on. Yeah. So. <laughs> we'll get it next anniversary. I promise. <laughs> I am not one for uh, making things clear by any means. So uh, I'll take part part of the blame. So. <laughs> so I'm pretty vague, sure I followed you. I, I really thought I had it on this one. I wrote it out <laughs> in bold. If you saw my notes it's very clear <laughs> but um so anyway uh they're producing it and they all get along great is the point uh it's awesome. hard to tell where Sweet. matthew really falls in like the bonds that are forming or what you know but um you know the simon side of, yeah and the simon side of the story is always a little more gets the the note in the official press but that's when they start the cult hero side project thing too um, yeah. And they bring Matthew in um, that with Simon to do this funny side off uh, side uh, side project kind of thing. And Michael Dempsey, the Cure's current bass player, wasn't there, but he eventually would play keyboards on it too. So somehow in the credits Fuck for yeah. Cult Hero, Matthew and Michael Dempsey are credited for keyboards. So again, unfortunately for Matthew, we don't really know what he's playing on any of <laughs> right. this. Even even though even though the guy <laughs> that they're dope, though, man, it's like. Mm -hmm. It's like young bands like playing around, meeting new people, meeting other people. Everyone's like, "Yo, I know this dude." Like, yeah, he cuts hair. <laughs> I'm sorry, and, uh, hey, he's you know, Simon's and buddy. Like, he, play, yeah. he plays like fucking four instruments. Like, he can fuck with drum machines and like the keys and like a bunch of other crap. Like, yeah, fuck yeah, they're all having they're fun. They're all vibing, man. They are. And, it's a good time. Uh, and there's, there are some cool keyboard stuff on, like, I Dig You mm -hmm. and Cult Hero and stuff that until yeah. re-listening to this a lot, I was like, oh, yeah, there's some cool keyboard shit going on mm -hmm. in the background there. But um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> shortly after, while showing the bandmates new Cure demos, this is the story of where uh, Robert tries to impress Michael Dempsey with the new what will be 17 seconds mm -hmm. demos, and he's like, eh, I'm not <laughs> feeling it. So he pulls in Simon Gallup from that. That's the quick version because we've heard that a billion times. But in this Can trade, you go over like a, that again? Yeah, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> so where where Matthew falls in all this, I don't really know. But somewhere, there's never been an absolute quote where 
um, Simon Gallup's like, hey, if I'm going to fucking leave the magazine spies for the cure, Matthew's got to come with me. You know, he's, he, Fuck I don't, yes. <laughs> who knows? But somewhere in there, it was like one of those two trades, you know, in baseball, they do that, right? Didn't they used to do yeah. that all that? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, three, three team trade? Yeah. yeah two for one? Take one dude and, a, <laughs> and the utility guy or whatever, you know? So, uh, it seems, it's a good score, though. The dude can, like, fucking cut hair. Yeah. He can, like, jam on some synths and, like, it's dope. Yeah. And who knows? It's maybe he's, like, really funny and stuff, too. So, like, we don't really know. <laughs> like, maybe he's, like, cracking yeah. jokes and, like, the life of the party at that cult hero <laughs> shit where everyone's just like, what is this shit? And he's all like, this is fucking awesome. And he's like, the life of the party. So, it's like, <laughs> yeah. let's grab this dude, you know? So, who knows? And but, it's like Simon being a bro. I bet, like, yeah. Simon just really likes him and, like, really thought he was, like, talented and could, like, just yeah. a good guy to hang and like, like, he's good with the. Um, he did good stuff. Yeah, know? which is a good point because him and Simon will cross paths yeah. again too. So it's a hell yeah, yeah. pretty cool. So um, yeah, it's hard to say uh, where all this is floating around, but the deal is done. Simon and Matthew say goodbye to the magazine spies and join the Cure, and immediately start working on these new songs uh, for an upcoming tour. Which is going to happen. Doom, doom. But going to the Ten Imaginary <laughs> Years book, Robert confesses he brought Matthew in, as we mentioned in the other episodes. Um, he didn't want Simon to be the only new guy. So <laughs> it's like hard to tell if it's a dig or not. If he just said he didn't know. So if they'd even have keyboards on 17 seconds, but he thought it was like a, you know, why not <laughs> have some more instruments? What did he say he did? He, he said didn't, he didn't want, <laughs> basically he didn't want only like one new guy. He wanted like two new guys. Yeah, he didn't want Simon to be the only new guy, like so with him and Lowell. Feel all alone. Which, like, why? Why? <laughs> like, why would you do that? He doesn't want him like. Well, he felt like if he if he came like, in with like a buddy, it would be like half the band is new guys, you know. And like it, an easier transition. Yeah, because like him and it's Lowell, like when you go to the playground and like you yeah. know you're like the only new kid there, and your mom makes you bring another kid, so you're not playing <laughs> yeah. by yourself, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he probably knows Simon's, you know, fairly, you know, shyish kind of dude from what we've heard of other stuff, and we'll get into that more in Simon's episode. <laughs> but maybe it was something where he thought it would be like a easier way to. Mm-hmm ease him into the band too to have his already buddy established you know makes yeah. sense yeah smart robert's a smart dude when it comes to these uh semi business investment kind of things even early on he always seems like he's just floating around but he's pretty fucking clever you could tell or he's pulling the strings on these things so anyway he brings him in he's the other new guy um, <laughs> they would have what it seems like the new perfect band. He danced around saying it was like uh, strategic, you know. Like it was strategic as shit. Probably you really danced around that. <laughs> Who knows? Well, they're successful, so it must have been yeah. it worked. Um, the band would have the perfect <laughs> new band experience touring with these new members, new songs, hitting the road. Like we said, it, as self-destructive as that tour was, it sounded like it was a blast and bonds formed. And more importantly, the songs got like super cemented before going into the studio. And, you know, hence why they were able to like crank it out in like 10 days or whatever the number yeah. varies a little bit <laughs> on each uh you know, like how many days that they had 10 days to record 17 seconds or whatever. And they did it. And, uh, it was a good point by Kelly actually in that last episode. I didn't catch until I was mixing it really, but, um, how in this one, they were so road tested for the 17 second songs all the way down to like the catchiness of the songs where they're still like shifting gears to like more moody songs, but they're still poppy and rocking in the sense of like three imaginary boys. But then like by faith, they don't do that. And that's when they, you can do songs like All Cats Are Gray and shit. And it's all like <laughs> awesome and like more studio songs. But then remember when they went on tour for that album, even it, they were like getting a lot of blank stares from the audience and shit, you know? Because it's, like, yeah. it's like, what the fuck is this, <laughs> you know? It's like playing like funeral party at a small club kind of thing, you know? It's like, you know, I mean, a lot of 17 second songs could have been done like that, but they probably right. cranked them out and knew how to make them like, poppier still while being moody you know so i don't know i thought that was a good point 
so that always helps with with recording too is just like having them super tight with the band so you're not just like writing it in the yeah. studio unless you're going for something just more bang it out and yeah. like 14 days or whatever exactly yeah yeah it varies like by all the different sources everyone like can you believe they recorded it in 10 days and can you believe they recorded it in 14 days it's like either way it's not it's not uh 12 yeah, years that's, <laughs> or whatever it's, uh, that's a tight band though. yeah you know. um i would love like if i had a time machine yeah I've said this a thousand times and I'll say it fucking again. It's just like when they were touring around like uh, 17 seconds in Faith, like some of those shows, like where they're just like figuring shit out. Like, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Just to see. Like you were saying, like playing small clubs, like that's powerful. Just bands jamming out. Yeah. Just the, any Cure show where like when the applause stops in between the song and then there's like half a minute of like dead silence (laughs) (laughs) it's just like the whole idea is so foreign of like people be like uh now what the fuck are they doing (laughs) like waiting for the song to start you know (laughs) he's like oh hold on (laughs) like fidgeting with his guitar plug fuck yeah Uh, um but but I've, i've been to shows and played shows where like where it stops yeah and people are like are you done or is this is the last. Are you still? Is this a thing? <laughs> this is still a show. Are they finished? Or? Yeah. Uh, so and then, 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 yeah. Then you just like, you know, people see people start unplugging cables, and everyone's like, "Oh shit, okay." And okay. Like, there'll be a smattering because he's. He like, it's just really <laughs> bad showmanship. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, we're just really bad at this. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> and our next or song. like that was fucking awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what the cure is going through. Like. Oh, sure. Yeah, you he know was he wasn't cracking shit. jokes in between the songs and shit. <laughs> so, um, everyone's hair looked really good. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine a joke between like funeral party and yeah, like, exactly. Or something like that? <laughs> like, I'm like, uh, yeah, what you call it? Call, 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 call. <laughs> and, like, what was like? Oh no, no, Robert. What do you think? <laughs> I was like, I didn't hear it. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, all, I don't know. All the mics are all, yeah, they're all delayed. <laughs> yeah. What are you call a, a chicken? Horse, 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 horse walks, walks into a bar, bar, bar. So, and, <laughs> and he's like, Jesus. And they're like kicking over beer cans and like, <laughs> fuck yeah, man. Well, oh, as awesome as all I that sounds. It. It wasn't total rock and roll mm. bliss once the tour ended <laughs> and they went into the studio to record this magical album. Um, again, in the 10 Imaginary Years book, uh, Robert says, um, oh, Matthew says, this is a direct Matthew quote, actually. Uh, when Robert asked me to join, I said yes immediately because the prospect was so exciting. My role was reasonably detached, though. I wasn't an integral part of the band, but I wasn't a on probation either i just did what robert told me to do <laughs> so, oh, probation yeah does, does robert have, oh, a, yeah. Pro- have he, a probation program yeah i think he puts people on probation so. and fucking hands out the merits and detentions <laughs> yeah so i guess that means he was he wasn't like robert was like like when they had band meetings he's like he's like Matthew. Matthew, shut the fuck up you're not allowed to talk. <laughs> you've, you've you've gotten uh two demerits and yeah. one more <laughs> Just smacks him with a ruler across his hands. <laughs> like, Lowell's hair. You shaved Lowell's head ridiculously. And like, <laughs> whaps him. White in the corner. <laughs> so, yeah. It was a tight ship, man, apparently. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, once recording uh, began, though, the band dynamics <laughs> did seem pretty strong. Um, uh, Robert would say in the 17 seconds deluxe uh, reissue liner notes, Simon and Lowell understood intuitively what I was trying to do, but Matthew found it a bit strange, I think. And that's the end of the quote, which is definitely vague, um, but that just doesn't sound very promising for his longevity in The Cure, maybe. Right. So, uh Maybe he but he's wasn't. a little strange. Like it's understandable. Yeah, I mean, he's just standing in the corner, just trying to cut everybody's hair. Yeah, 
<laughs> you got to get in there, man. <laughs> Nothing strange about input. 17 seconds going on. Yeah, I mean, is he really <laughs> wrong for thinking something strange is going on? <laughs> they kicked him out once, like, they, they had their own barber money. Yeah. <laughs> or their own stylist money. Maybe that's <laughs> you know? what it was. Like, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> So, yeah, maybe he wasn't having quite the blast while recording it. But uh, um, Apparently, Chris Perry, their manager, never quite clicked or saw what the interest in Matthew was. He said he loved Simon right off the first meeting when Robert says, I got these two guys I want to bring into the band. Um, but he said, yeah, something was up with Matthew. He was just very boorish and overbearing. <laughs> so, which, you know... Hmm. Aren't great. He's like, can we all not do acid? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, like one or two of us. He's like, like two like demerits, one Matthew. Of, one other person besides me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that's probably why he left. He's just like, they're Jesus like, you Christ. can't hang, dude. And yeah. They're like, what? I said you can't. You know, they're like, whoa, what was that? Yeah. They're just like, oh, fuck, tripping balls. <laughs> It's like he's like, come on, dudes. Uh, yeah. Do you want the haircut or not? <laughs> I can't play keyboards That's and cut your hair at the same time. <laughs> what do you mean, make it giant? <laughs> Just make it. Big. What do you mean? Like I can't he's like cut their hair on I acid. Cut the hair. I'm not gonna. Yo, this is my new theory. Uh. That's how they got their hair because they're just on acid. And he's like, fine. Just He's like, can you make it big? It's like, yeah, this is what you gotta do, man. <laughs> Just take money. You know, like a hairstylist. Yeah, Come and he on, as a joke. Yeah. Yo, Put he should on. get money just from like the image of the cure. It's like the hair. Yeah, <laughs> I inspired. I swear that. to fuck, I, I inspired. Ten, it. ten bucks he had a hand in it. You huh. know what I mean? You think he, he inspired to. them to to go big with their hair? Yeah, they were doing acid and cutting hair. Hmm. I don't know if they're full on doing the acid stuff around this time. I think that comes a little later, but <laughs> we'll see. let me have this, man. Okay, they're probably, they're probably just drunk, but sure, sure, sure. <laughs> let me have this. Okay, yeah. exactly, <laughs> Donald. That's beers. wonderful. <laughs> Great job. Um... <laughs> I won't explain it anymore. Okay, <laughs> yeah. This guy um, never inputs at all. Nah, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's the Matthew Hartley of this podcast. Yeah. With, without, with, without the hairstyle, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, after the recording of the album, the band would hit the road immediately, uh, touring again, including, which we haven't mentioned yet in this round of 17 Seconds Praise, but um, that footage of when they go to the U.S. for the first time um, and... Uh, play on the east coast there and there's that really cool which is all in one clip now i just recently found again that uh it's like at the hurrah club or something um and uh yeah it's like a great like three night thing that surfaced right around when we were doing the last with the original 17 seconds episode i remember like what the fuck is this because it's like super clear footage it's like the closest you get to a time capsule kind of show um from the 17 seconds tour and it's super rad we'll put it in our thread but i'm sure most people have probably stumbled across it at this point but um yeah it's real good yeah, yeah we tried to go to that uh their first show yeah uh, place. Yeah, yeah. Where they played. It's not there anymore, but it's like some kind of corporate building now. Yeah. yeah so, Pretty but, sad. Yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. That's where <laughs> <it's at. laughs> um, So after the tour, it's not like it was a pretty successful tour. Nothing, you know, like I don't know if they continued the super debaucherous version of it on the second part of the tour or what, but um, mm-hmm. uh, afterwards, Matthew departed from the band. It seemed like it was just cited as differences. Nobody really, no real mention of why or how it went down for this one. Um, nobody mentioned who gave the bad news or if it was even bad news. It seemed like maybe everybody was kind of fine with it. Um, I was kind of got the vibe. It was kind of a cold exit, but uh, I mean, there isn't really anything to back that up. So, uh, mutual breakup, I guess they call it. <laughs> so who knows? Yeah. I hope it was <laughs> like just, a mutual thing. Yeah. I think like... he was just like, you know, and we'll kind of see some stuff that I dug up later that, uh, maybe it wasn't, you know, like a cold thing. He was just like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm done. You know, and he was out. So he left the band and, um, you know, a little bit had surfaced where I'd found, I was a bit surprised, 
like in a super early episode we did, we were even kind of busting on him for being like mm. a watered down lull on keys even, which is super harsh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, um, damn. Yeah, so, but that apparently it's come up that he's like super talented piano player, keyboardist, and his gripes with the cure was that it was all like Robert wanted him to play like the two finger kind of riffs and stuff and he was like this is fucking boring i, I want to play like real piano and keys and stuff and uh so he was just kind of like, like eh, I'm, i don't want to play something I, re- I really do want to apologize for like just talking shit and being dumb <laughs> um like and, in general or, or <laughs> yeah just in general but also with uh, what i've said in previous podcasts uh, yeah. about this dude like that's like, not like I a did bad boy some, of you i know but I, I, but but I listen to some of I listen to some of his stuff and it's like he is pretty talented. Like. Yeah, and who knows? I mean, yeah, you we just see the clips of him kind of plucking away the der, 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 der kind of thing. But I mean, it's like that's probably that's what probably they Robert want. just like just play this dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's like, and he's sure, like, I can make it. And he's like, no, no, this, those four <laughs> notes over and over. Like just these, yeah. <laughs> just the white keys. <laughs> that's what okay. I said. <laughs> He probably would have slayed on uh, from the edge of the deep green sea, where yeah, ding, 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 over ding, and ding, over ding. again. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so, where the fuck does the story go from Jesus. here? He is out of the cure. <laughs> well, I did find a few little nuggets, but it does get pretty scattered. <laughs> um, so, this is where uh, hopefully I tried to keep it as much in the in the timeline as possible. But it, it does get it's if you're anticipating the epic. Resume of Phil Thorn Alley, uh, you can pretty much exhale because that's not going to happen. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, there is some pretty funny little things I was able to dig up out there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, if you are a Matthew Hartley diehard fan out there, of course, apologies and calm the fuck down. You know, it's just not out there. So please <laughs> send it to us if Bless you, you if you man, have some. Amazing. Yeah, it said that we'll be totally glad to do a redo episode of some. Or something's unearthed that like he played the the riff on whatever the fuck you know the Beverly Hills Cops three soundtrack or something great yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was the mastermind behind the Axel F theme or whatever but um <laughs> as far as we know I don't know but uh, here's a few little nuggets that we can leave you uh, good listeners with um, in his mini profile was a good place to start at the end of 10 imaginary years as we've already referenced um, it says after and who knows what's like kind of a dig at this or if it was whatever but it says after leaving the cure in 1980 he worked in a zoo period Fuck yeah! What? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's just kind of fucking Joe Exotic. Like, yeah, I think. Uh, zoo I was like, hair. oh shit! I started digging in. <laughs> he he uh, like fifty big cats. Lost both his legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, still has his legs. But who doesn't want to work? Like, yeah. I mean, zoos, zoos are fucked up. But. Uh. Especially in 1981. Yeah, it's kind of cool being around like some animals and shit. Yeah, this is like pre woke times or whatever you want to call it, where it's like zoos are terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't imagine 1980s really zoos suck. being very, very good oh, to yeah. the animals. Especially in 1981 or so. <laughs> They're yeah, like, I know. no judgment probably- on Matthew, but. I'd yeah, it's probably general. really dark. And you know, at some point they're like, "Do you have any experience working at a zoo?" And he's like, "Well, I have toured with a rock and roll band." And they're like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're hired." <laughs> it's like, I've been in a cage my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> I understand these animals. I could help them. So, you don't know. Yeah. So hairdresser, <laughs> zoo worker. Um, they also called him a so, casual laborer. For an insula- installation company, dude's uh, hustling. Yeah, wow. sure. A casual laborer for an installation company. I don't know what he was installing. Like, uh, like casually, casual? casually, like casually laboring. installing. <laughs> like just standing around talking. Yeah. <laughs> We're not saying he worked hard at this. He did like really work. It's hard. a very British way to say like he worked in construction and put insulation in. Yeah. He was like helped you know? install something. Yeah. And it's like That's... yeah, but like casual and labor, it's like fuck you. It's not casual labor. It's fucking labor. Yeah. 
Like, casually there's casual labor. about it. <laughs> yeah, it's such Maybe a if you don't have to wear a uniform and you can what? dress casually. <laughs> Donald, like, you seem really upset about this. Have yeah. people told you casual labor at the fucking antique mart? Is that in your job title? Casual labor? <laughs> <laughs> ah, just being a laborer. They just put that on your name tag and you throw it every day? <laughs> casual my ass. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And it's like I'm wearing jorts. Is that casual? <laughs> yeah, that's a ca- <laughs> he doesn't wear a suit and tie while he installs the fucking. Oven. But there's nothing casual about yeah. it. Like, it's fucking work. It's a bunch of bullshit. Like, yeah, I don't know. Construction is a lot of work. Like, yeah, nothing casual about it. Well, unfortunately, not like too many has an axe to grind. Yeah. <laughs> He also joined as, and left as we all do. <laughs> he joined and left several local bands and uh so casually. Yeah, yeah casually mm. played in some bands. Um he has probably has like two, three jobs, plays in a fucking band. Yeah. Got married in eighty three, but that's all we hear Fuck about yeah. any kind of personal life stuff, so who knows where that went from there. But uh, He's a hard worker. Uh, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goes down to the pool after his shift. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can you do me hair? <laughs> you got yourself a man there, though. He could do your hair. He could yeah, fucking right. install some insulation. Some He's good with animals. Up. Break the dog in real Can quick. Can play <laughs> music for you. Yeah. yeah, you like smoke a joint. And he's like, oh, do you want to hear me play some shit on the piano? It's like. <laughs> Fuck yeah! And he's like, bloom, 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 bloom. he's at yeah. the pub. He's at this yeah. play for today. He comes on. He's like, I played that fucking riff. I'm like, no way. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Mate. yeah, mate. I played that fucking riff <laughs> with his like construction work buddies. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, After uh, laying some insulation, that's dope. <laughs> like fucking body slamming a tiger while talking about how he came up with the intro to a forest or something. <laughs> Like, no fucking way. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> we got a fucking Komodo dragon, mate. And they're like, no way. He's like, fuck yeah. Things brutal. Fucking brutal. Um, as far as. I watched the live pig. <laughs> As far as Cure Collector notes, Fuck this yeah, is an like interesting like nugget that came up well, here. Uh, this is one for, for Chaz to put on his wish list for records. But um, apparently the the website, thecurerecords.com, you familiar with that one? Yeah. Cure, CureRecords.com. Yeah. Uh, apparently there's a Matthew Hartley solo seven, <laughs> seven inch <laughs> floating around out there. Yes, there is. And it's called yeah. Gate Crashing and has four yeah. songs. Issued in 1987 as a promo only, um, and it was posted on this site in 2010, like heaps of years later, um, and it got a response that was apparently somebody that knows Matthew, but it wasn't Matthew, or maybe just didn't want to admit it was him, but um, they somebody had posted this record on there, and then in response it said, I am in touch with Matthew Hartley, and this is what he told me in recent mail about the record. It's a recording I did in mid eighties. As far as I can remember, I recorded this as a promo and not for any kind of official release. I think I had just left fool's dance because I wasn't happy with the replacement singer. I accompanied the cure on a few European tours and handed them out to people, which might explain how your copy ended up in France. I can't awesome. remember. Yeah, I can't remember how many were pressed. I have since recorded stuff with two other bands, Sur- uh, Surrender Dorothy and Earth Calling. Again, these were promotional demos. I've recently started working on, a, on music again with a fantastic singer and musician under the name of Icicle Thieves. So that one little passage had a few oh, little more rabbit such holes. A good name. <laughs> God damn it. So, if you can find this, there's no found audio of this recording. Sadly, sadly nothing. <laughs> so if anybody has this fucking promo, they should upload it. Yeah. To somewhere. So it's someone can see. Be dope. Uh, according to Discogs, the uh-huh. medium price for it is $33. Oh, wow. So That's not you much. could find it if you could find it and, just upload it. Who and has thirty three dollars? Jesus, Ouch. not not in these trying times. <laughs> Yikes! I mean, I'd go as high so. as like twenty four, but uh, thirty three. <laughs> 
Jeez, yeah, yeah you yeah, think that would be like crazy high just for collecting. That's like that's, a four pack of toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I love that name, gate, gate Crashing. Yeah. It's very really good. Yeah. So I wonder what the hell's yeah. up with that. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. So there's no no audio of it out there. Um, yeah, second though, handing them out while accompanying the cure on a few European dates, which is cool because that was referenced that this happened way past 1980. So it must have been that he yeah. was hanging out with the cure. So negates that. Whole oh, yeah, I was just gonna a, say that doesn't that doesn't make any sense where you would like if he recorded them in the mid 80s and. He yeah. had to be on tour with them at some point, right? Yeah, Maybe so he was, he was just like, kind of hanging out with them probably. Yeah, you know, I guess if they're buds, then he hair. would just be like tagging along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simon did take a tiger on tour with him apparently. Nice. And they, <laughs> and they needed somebody to... Have you ever seen a limo? <laughs> <laughs> they started to get really rich around that point where... <laughs> Roger always travels with two lemurs. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Simon bought an on walk. <laughs> take it on the road with us everywhere. <laughs> I slipped it out the back door for him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's cool that the, it sounds like they're on good terms, at least by 1987. Maybe they had a falling out after that, but who knows? So that's kind of cool. Uh, his third mention. To buy ants for the uh, Aardvark yeah. during the tour. It's like, where do you buy a bunch of ants? Like, <laughs> that was I his job. Absolutely. He had to go each town and find the fucking. They had to get. They sent Lowell out to go collect yeah, them off the ground. Like, He's like, I'm in the Covers fucking Covers himself in honey and just release out of Just give him a glass and jar. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm doing it. It's like, I guess I'll drink. Yeah, I'm just eating ants off them. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the tour fell apart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why Lowell always had that extra Ooh. bottle of wine every night. <laughs> like, I got a kid rolling ants. Drink the memories to, away. If I have to look for ants in one more city. <laughs> Dumping honey on himself, like, god damn it, like chugging beers, and like he's gonna go lay in a fucking field. Um, <laughs> so uh, he mentioned because of all because of Simon's art, yeah. god damn it. Mm. <laughs> I need to make a lol like screenplay of just all the crazy shit that we imagine yeah. that he's done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> he mentioned fool's dance and in their early stages and that that comes up again because that's the band simon will join after he leaves the cure and uh at the end of 82 there after the pornography debacle so it's interesting to note that matthew and simon were reunited and before it was even fool's dance it was called the cry and that's when matthew was in there and simon came back and joined them but then, like you said, he he didn't he wasn't down with the singer change, and uh, he split, and they became Fool's Dance, and Simon did the recording. So again, uh, Matthew didn't get to make it onto the recordings of Fool's Dance, <laughs> so we don't really this get to hear bastard. him. Cut, he doesn't ever get to cut loose on anything. So uh, so a bit unfortunate, but yeah, kind of cool that you know he must be cool with Simon, you know, if they cross paths again at that point. So. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, then digging into the, some of those other bands that he mentioned casually or not so casually, he's like, "Yeah, my uh, record isn't real; it's just promotional." But I do play in other bands. <laughs> Surrender, Dorothy, which uh, turns out uh, there's a billion fucking bands named Surrender, Dorothy. Um, really? Yeah, and about ninety percent of them weren't successful uh yeah referring to yeah most of them you know most of them are like 40 50 year old dudes and (laughs) just have these bands i got super excited when i typed that in at first though because something did pop up so many yeah and i was like oh shit this is it and and then even weirder uh it popped up in reference to the band sleeper this brit pop band that i really loved from the 90s and apparently their first ba- version of their band was named Surrender Dorothy. I was like, holy shit, he was in Sleeper? <laughs> and I was like, no, they were just one of many bands that had that name. And they're, 
you know, manager was like, yeah, you need to change your name. So no connection there. <laughs> well, like where'd that come from? It was like from a, like a book or like from wizard of Oz. Remember when the, oh. when she writes surrender Dorothy in the smoke in the sky. So it's all like, yeah. Cool. Wizard of Oz reference. You know, it is Nerds. cool. Yeah. So everybody was like, yeah, I know. Um, it's like, you know what? No one's ever done. Like who thinks that the genius that was like, I'm the first person to come up with Surrender Dorothy. Yeah, reference well, the Wizard the, of Oz. The, the movies <laughs> everyone's watched a million times. Yeah. Probably uh, one of the most watched movies. Yeah, totally. Clever. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> so I felt more positive about Earth Calling. I'm like, well, no other band's going to have that name because that's a pretty bad band name. I was like, all right, Earth Calling. I'm going to find some shit on this one. But um, again, no results came up. Uh, the only thing that popped up there was an article that I'm mentioned. I'm not mad at that band name either, man. That's, yeah, that's you're a down better, like, Earth a, Calling. Like a better song name. Yeah. It sounds like a, like a reggae band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, like a really <laughs> <laughs> like a yeah. Natalie Merchant side project or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <She's> like hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Sound like Ace a of base and uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, after that, not sure what the hell he's been up to since '87 is the last confirmed. Um, you know, sighting, especially as far as music. But then fast forward a whole 25 years later. So who the fuck knows what the hell happened in between there? Um, I guess he's kind of like Jesus. So there's a whole lost period. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I finally got something uh, that that was from those icicle thieves that he mentioned. And they're from Brighton nice. around 2012. They had a bunch of live shows, or a few anyway. Um, and that's the one he mentions. It's with a female vocalist. Her name's Lee Mills. And she sings and plays flute, which I'm never yeah. too yeah. big on uh, <laughs> some on stage flutage. But um, Matthew is playing keys, I assume. Um, Fuck yeah. They have, keys and flute? Nice. Yeah, keys and flute. They, have, <laughs> they got three songs on YouTube, one called Tin Box, Henrietta Needs Ooh. Help, and Wire. And, uh, yeah. And you Surrender know, Dorothy. It, yeah, and Surrender Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm not really sure what the fuck Matthew played on these, but it sounds like, you know, he you know, was a pretty key part of this band. And, the, like, the stuff I could find mm-hmm. was, like, they're really pushing – a few shows around 2012 on their like Facebook page and stuff was the majority of any of their posts were these recordings and then those shows. And then as soon as the shows were over, seems like, I don't know if they just totally fizzled out or didn't <laughs> record anything else or something happened and it just didn't really have anything else. But I recommend we'll, we'll put links to those songs, listen to them. Not really my jam, but, uh, but you know, yeah, it's not my thing. It's good. People are putting stuff out there into the world. Yeah. So, um, I found Make a site. <laughs> I found a I site. Like I wasn't, a, a, what's that? Did you listen to it, Tom? Uh, yeah, I okay. did. I listened. I skimmed to him. Yeah. Um, not my jams. Yeah. But I appreciate it. I, I like the enthusiasm and like, and like the fact that someone was just like doing whatever the fuck they wanted. Yeah. And that's what he was doing. And like, it wasn't terrible. Like, that's well, not know. terrible. It's, I, like yeah, I've heard worse. You know what I mean? Like, and and that's just what that guy's doing is like whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. And I like that. I like that spirit. He's strange because he has more shit in the last like five years than he has in the last thirty or whatever. So uh, we got. Uh, but oh, before we get to that, there was a cool thing we stumbled across. Somebody, the Cure community, was some kind of website, old school kind of message board looking thing. In 2013, they brought something to my attention that I hadn't seen in forever. You guys probably seen the footage of like... Of course you're on that, Gavin. God damn it. What's that? Of course I'm on that. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not a member. Okay. Um, <laughs> a lurker. Boom. But uh, um, there's a 1979 <laughs> live performance. So this was before they even recorded 17 Seconds, but they had Matthew in the band. And it's from Paris, and uh, I know you've probably seen it. It's a really good high-def kind of clip of where Robert's wearing, like, a long sleeve blue shirt and, like, kind of almost pinkish red pants, and they're, like, playing kind of... Sp- <laughs> nice. Yeah, you'd probably see it if you just YouTubed them in the early days. But um, but the cool thing about it is that they are they kick it off with Matthews in the band and Simon's on bass, and, and they open with, like, a really fast, like, 
three imaginary boys feeling version of a forest, you know, like those early ones where it's like, yeah. Yeah. more rock. And so he plays on that. And then they kind of just go into like some early versions of a few 17 second songs, but it's still kind of more of the songs from three imaginary boys and boys don't cry and stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah. while they're doing those, like the bulk of the set, Matthew just is sitting off to the side of the stage. So he only plays on the first song who knows how it's edited too, but like he, he plays on the first song and then, like, the second to last song is Three Imaginary Boys, and it pans over, and you see him just sitting there, and he's, like, reading the fucking magazine. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And he's just, like, sitting there, like, the camera. You know, it's, like, on a big stage, so the audience probably couldn't even see him, but he's just, like, sitting there. looks like he's all fucking bored just reading the magazine. <laughs> and then he comes back That's on stage, wild. oddly enough, for Killing an Arab and plays, like, a weird keyboard part with a Killing an Arab. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I just thought it was goofy and weird that he'd be like sitting there reading a fucking magazine when he's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> like it makes me think of like a modern days it would just be him looking at his food. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like, that's uh, your next T-shirt. I'll play on the next Chaz. one. <laughs> like just Photoshop in a phone instead of a magazine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, which brings us to finally in 2016 matthew re-emerges in a band called the speak and this is the other link i sent you guys and he's playing bass now actually it's a three-piece nice. 60s rock pop kind of band the songs are actually on itunes they put out like two eps um, I believe he wasn't on the first one. So again, I don't know if he what he played on, <laughs> what he hasn't. <laughs> he didn't uh, actually record on that yeah. one. But I'm like about 90% sure man. the second one. Like absolute renaissance man. Yeah, so. Playing bass. So yeah, he plays Cutting bass hair. now. And there's like a website where you can see him. And, you know, it's definitely him playing bass. And uh, the 2018 five-song EP called Say Yeah, he's definitely playing bass on that one. Um, and you know it's pretty tight. It's solid. It's definitely like kind of old dude rock, you know. And, and I, yeah, I say yeah. that probably being in an old dude rock band that I don't even realize it. At the time. Right. <laughs> so I mean, like, all the power to them, you know. Um, and they're tight. Like, I have a fucking kid. I have to get a job, but I still want to make for some fucking yeah, jams. So. Like I'm putting up fucking insulation, dude. Yeah. Like, Was that the first or second link you sent? Uh, second one, I think. So. Okay. Yeah, there's one that you sent me, and I thought it sounded like a like a generic U2. Kind yeah, of when, it's probably when, that. When, you, when U2's not very good, so it's like a generic, <laughs> yeah. not good U2. Yeah, U2. it's probably that. So. It's just kind of like yeah. some dad rock. Yeah, it's yeah, just dad solid rock. rock yeah. And, yeah. and I don't even still rock. in the... Maybe the '60s rock was subconscious because they used Beatles font for whatever the fuck reason on their website, like their band... Mm like name is written in like Beatles font so it's kind of like okay um but um yeah but yeah looks like they're having fun they're just playing around shows they played like a CD release at the Cavern Club too you know and it was like cool fuck yeah so uh yeah and you know who knows they'd probably still be lining up some shows if there were any shows going on in the world anywhere <laughs> right now but uh, <laughs> um, uh, I know unfortunately we don't know if they're still uh alive know. Yeah, a lot. He's like, I saw, I saw this guy a lot. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, we'll assume that they're all still still kicking. But, um, yeah, Hopefully. so, you know, definitely worth checking out. Again, we'll put the links in there if anybody hasn't tracked that down and is curious. But, uh, you know, it's it's good that it's out there and it's rocking. And, uh, yeah, other. It's pre, uh, pre-pandemic. I really respect it. Dude. Yeah. Like, I've been thinking. So I've been like going to do shit, like, like God, like all the stuff I could have been doing. And yeah. This guy was just doing shit. Yeah. Donald's like, having a midlife crisis right in front of us. Yeah, he's gonna buy a motorcycle <laughs> after this. No, I'm not a casual impressive. laborer. <laughs> it's not about me. ponytail. <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, we all come but out I, of this I with a little legit, bit of like really respect. Yeah, like, totally. I mean, it's like I hope we all form some fucking bad and, and after all this shit, and everyone gets out and right does a little something. Otherwise, seems a little crazy or whatever, you know. And uh, if we <laughs> if we make it there, that'll be great. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, no reason to believe that. 
this band might not open for the cure on their next tour this guy either, was maybe doing the it speak the whole time. <laughs> this guy was doing it the whole time well there was about 20 years we don't really know what he was doing but i'm sure he was doing something yeah he seems like a very 20 years resourceful dude. dude i'm sure yeah he, he seems flying under the radar yeah so so it's hard to say of the forgotten three from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, what the fuck does that really mean? But at this point, he's very pivotal to the cure in the sense that he was their first keyboardist, I think, is the kind of bottom line and showing right. the first signs of those extra instruments and it can branch yeah. out from just a three-piece rock band. Absolutely and, agree. Know, it's, kind of, like, it's a fucking yeah i mean even like we kind of touched on with the other episode of like how through faith in pornography it's almost weird that they didn't have a keyboardist through those you know it's like you know, when you see those early footage they tried weird things like robert playing keys on him while he was you know singing and and simon had that you know kind of for yeah. cold he would play like the organ pedals and shit you know and stuff so i mean it was clear they needed a keyboardist even through those albums yeah you know? just so they could like, be like dope guitar and keyboards yeah like. so i think he's definitely pivotal in that respect i mean it's definitely of the three he's the hardest argument of like god damn it he should have been in the rock hall but i mean at that totally point did. why not all of them i still think it's ridiculous yeah. but um you know it's yeah i think phil thornally probably had the strongest yeah, just because yeah. all, all the links that came from him, like mm-hmm. going on down the line, and then just his production work in the future, like should have counted for something. Yeah, really. So, yeah. I mean, but yeah, I would say Matthew's the, the bottom, probably, probably bottom the, piece of bread. <laughs> the first one that he gave in on, you know, like the negotiations that were going back and forth. Yeah. It was like, all right, I'll give you Matthew, but all right, come on, really, Andy? And they're like, no. <laughs> like, all right, well, you got to take Phil, right? Like, no. <laughs> it's like, jeez, this person really hated the top. <laughs> but um, anyway. So Simon Smart, like, like, this guy fucking kicks ass. Yeah, like, so who knows? And maybe they're all buds balls, still like, and actually he, hang out. Gets the work done, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, again, yeah. just throwing it out there, of course, if we're missing something obvious, we'd love to hear from anyone out there. Um, and, uh, you know, seems like he's pretty low-key dude, but, you know, he's busy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like we said, that's pretty rad that he has the ability to say, you know, yeah, I played that fucking riff on Play for Today. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, that's impressive. Played on a like, good album. Yeah, killer, if you're, you're right? going to pick one Cure album to be a part of, it's a good one. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So you can't, can't it's like believe classics. <laughs> Unlike the top. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that's like, yeah, that was it. <laughs> it is really fucking like, it's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame he's not in the Rock, Rock Hall. Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he, I'm sure they gave him something, like yeah. the band or Robert. Yeah, I mean, he gave know. him a shout out. If nothing else, that was nice. At the <laughs> the uh, yeah, he, they he sent him an edible, uh, edible edible arrangement. arrangement. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, and a, <laughs> in a small little plaque that says, "Sorry, you're not in the Hall of Fame." Yeah, Robert <laughs> probably sent him his plaque. I was like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I sent a f- I sent a few sorry texts, and uh, <laughs> you didn't get them. So we wrapped it up. <laughs> there we go. Uh, On then, to the next. Uh, concludes our 17 second celebrations of the uh, 40th anniversary. <laughs> Any uh, lingering thoughts after we've dove into it? I, I always feel like we've done it proper when I'm officially sick of that album. I've listened to it so much in the last mm-hmm. month that I'm like definitely ready to move on at this point as far as which Cure album I want to obsess over. But um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, it's I don't, nice because I, uh, I I definitely did. I didn't get burnt out on it, but uh, I listened to it a lot. Yeah, but yeah, I don't I don't know how I'm going to be able to handle faith. Like yeah, if I listen I to as much faith as I did, 17 seconds, it's going to be a 
It's gonna be a, yeah, gonna be a, gonna be a bad fucking week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we got some good stuff on the horizon. We got a lot of people have been super nice out there. They've been just really sending in nice things that I want to try to track down or just really appreciate the super sweet comments. Yeah. This past like couple of weeks, I've been getting so many sweet like emails or messages of people and really appreciate it and we've been happy hopefully with everything we've tried to crank out here and uh yeah it's yeah. pretty cool we got roger's solo albums coming out i kind of want to do a review of that if i'm able to track it down and get it to everybody and okay. we can all give it a listen so i know the actual vinyl got delayed but i think the deli- the digital is still coming out like in next week maybe so uh that might be fun do like a roger album review so yeah i hope everybody stays safe out there and they appreciate this wonderful album 17 seconds of getting us all through april which has turned out to be a pretty fucking dreadful month but uh hopefully (laughs) Mm -hmm. the celebration of what a classic album it is sticks with us all and um you know all i can really say is like at the end of road warrior um, remember <laughs> when nobody saw Matthew Hartley again it would be like uh, as for Matthew Hartley that was the last <laughs> we ever saw of him he lives now only in my memory Lowell's <laughs> uh, dress is humongous yeah <laughs> Yeah, he's got the uh, ass cut out of his pants. Road Warrior, yeah. Yeah. Road Warrior Cure. Shit, oh, there's an episode like, in itself. Like Guar Cure. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but until next time, thanks for uh, hanging in there with us out there. Everybody keep safe. Chaz, Donald, Yo. thanks so much. Yo. And I uh, yes. hope everybody learned a little bit more about Matthew Hartley. <laughs> until Fuck then. yeah. Nice guy. <laughs> talk hard. Stay strong. Don't die. <laughs> Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Oh. Do it for now, and um, happy to report Donald is safely back on the moon, away from the coronavirus, holding tight, waiting for that new Cure album. We did get an update of sorts from NME. Roger was talking about it. Um, more about his new album that's coming out and um, yeah he mentioned that the new Cure record though is being mixed and mastered and it'll be well worth the wait so we got Donald where he needs to be he'll be the first to let us know when it's headed our way and uh, yeah fingers crossed but um, yep be sure to subscribe on uh, Apple Podcast and follow us on the Instagram at the Holy Hour Podcast Facebook page is another good place for episodes such as this. To find the thread, you can hear uh, Matthew Hartley's post-cure projects that we were talking about. So go on over there and check them on out and like that page. Um, And, uh, you know, YouTube, subscribe on that thing too so you can hear those old episodes until I start sprinkling more in there. I'm going to stick to the plan. I'm going to do a new episode. Then we'll upload an oldie in there and hopefully they just pop up on the bottom of your threads there so if you're looking for old ones or never got them the first time around keep an eye on the uh, bottom of the list they should be popping up and we're just going to kind of coincide with anniversaries and stuff and ones that we liked in particular just to get ones um out that that we really liked first as opposed to just starting way at the beginning and then uploading all those mediocre early ones when we're still feeling it out but we'll eventually get them all on there and uh, let me know if anything's uh, too annoying or not annoying enough. We can and we can uh, get suggestions there. But otherwise, just contact me, Gavin Connor at gmail.com if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, and stuff like that. And um, until next time, like I said, thanks for uh, celebrating uh, 17 seconds with us this month. I hope uh, we we're hope able to take your mind off all this craziness for at least a minute. And uh, thank you so much for all your support and uh, kind words. And I hope everybody's doing good out there. Just keep doing what you're doing. It's hard to say where everyone is and where they'll be by the time this even posts. Everything changes so fast. But uh, just hang in there and uh, stay strong and keep yourself safe and the ones around you. And uh, we'll we'll just keep shoveling out some cure stuff over here. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, thanks for listening. Easy.